Hello, and welcome to Science of St. Louis News. I'm Emily Roth. And I'm Michelle Chuval. And our breaking news story today is global warming. Warning signs. Here are some things to look out for that may be signs of global warming. First, you can get heat waves, ocean warming and rising, flooding, glaciers melting, Arctic and Antarctic warming. And these events can also cause such events as spreading disease, early spring arrival, plant and animal range and population shifts, as well as coral reef bleaching, downpours, heavy snow, and droughts, and fires. So you, as you can tell, global warming can cause colder winters as well as hotter summers. Can you see some of these changes already? Now we will turn to Michelle Chuval, who will tell us about the current conditions of our planet. Michelle? Yes, and thank you, Emily. In the last century, the average air temperature near Earth's surface rose 0.74 plus or minus 0.18 degrees Celsius, which is due to an increase in human-caused greenhouse gas concentrations. As you can see, in the next 100 years, the temperature will likely rise by 1.1 to 6.4 degrees Celsius. Because of these increases, we will probably see sea level changes and differences in the amount of precipitation and its pattern. This could also increase how frequent and intense extreme weather will be. Watch out for those twisters, folks. You don't want to be sent to the land of Oz. <laughs> As I was saying, since the last ice age, 20,000 years ago, the Earth has warmed up by about 8 to 10 degrees Celsius and sea level has risen about 125 meters. Since 1979, land temperatures have increased about twice as fast as ocean temperatures, 0.25 degrees Celsius de per decade versus 0.13 degrees Celsius per decade. 2005 was the warmest year, exceeding the record set in 1998 by a few hundredths of a degree. I remember that summer. It was so hot that there were a lot of visitors to the theme parks. Right. The major natural greenhouse gases causing these changes are water vapor, which causes approximately 36 to 70 percent of the greenhouse effect, carbon dioxide causing 9 to 26 percent, methane 4 to 9 percent, and ozone 3 to 7 percent. Since 1750, after interstate was introduced, concentrations of carbon dioxide and methane have increased by 31 percent and 149 percent respectively in the atmosphere, much higher than any time in the last 650,000 years. Although greenhouse gases have caused these increases, without them, the temperature on Earth would be 30 degrees Celsius lower, which would be uninhabitable by humans. Join us next week for more updates on the current conditions of our wonderful planet. Back to you, Emily. Thank you, Michelle. And now on to how you, the viewers, can help prevent the Earth from warming up too much. Now that we've told you the facts about global warming, here's some things that you can do to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, save energy and money, reduce our nation's reliance on foreign oil, and make the air cleaner. Firstly, at home, change your light bulbs to energy efficient ones and look for other ENERGY STAR appliances, electronic appliances that can reduce greenhouse gases, gas emissions. Next, make sure your home is properly sealed and insulated. Closing up cracks in your home and sealing ducts can make your home more energy efficient. A home energy auditor can identify where your home needs work. You can also use green power. That comes from renewable sources like wind and sun. Another way to save energy, which reduces greenhouse emissions, is to use water efficiently. Don't leave the water running while you're brushing your teeth or shaving, and always remember to quickly fix leaky toilets and sinks. One leaky toilet can waste 200 gallons of water a day. And of course, always remember to reduce, reuse, and recycle. It is also important to reduce your emissions on the road. When buying a car, first check the EPA's Green Vehicle Guide and Fuel Economy Guide to find a car that uses less gas and saves you money. Next, drive smart. Go easy on the brakes and gas pedals. Don't keep unnecessary weight in your car. And use cruise control to reduce your time and reduce your time spent idling. Check your tire pressure frequently. Driving on flat tires reduces your fuel efficiency. There are also alternative fuels available. Flex fuel vehicles, FFVs, can be fueled with a blend of ethanol, a gas produced from corn. The Alternative Fuels Data Center will tell you if your car is an FFV vehicle and help you locate an alternative fuel station near you. And remember, you can always combine your trips. Do several errands together. 
carpool, or find alternative transportation, such as buses, walking, biking, or using a light rail system or metro. Finally, you can save the environment at school. Get involved at your high school, college, or university. Reduce your emissions in your dorm. Use energy efficiency on campus, or even create a campus climate action plan. Talk to your administration about having many recycling options and making the school green. Also, teach students about climate change. There are many educational tools out there to teach young kids about the environment and what they can do. Education and spreading the word is one of the most beneficial things you can do to stop global warming. Thank you, Emily. We here at Science News of St. Louis hope you have been well informed about global warming and have been inspired to help prevent the bad effects by doing some of the things my co-anchor has recommended. Thanks for watching. I'm Michelle Chuval. And I'm Emily Roth. And don't forget to tune in next week for our special Rosie O'Donnell. Enough said.